Last time on The Journal of Rick the Three Perils, Armstrong went to investigate a fire that had erupted in Bingolf's field. He came to a cave where the Dark Lord Blue Blue was hatching a plan to destroy all of Totten. He was then chased by an army of crones down the tunnels until he came upon a prison of Lostlanders. After saving the Lostlanders, they got in a battle with the crones. And now we shall find out what happens in the final part of the Journal of Rick, The Three Perils, Armstrong's Adventure. Welcome, my friends, to the final adventure in Totten. So, uh, this book goes on for about 200 more pages, and, you know, I, I really don't want to read all of that here on the couch. So I thought I'd just go ahead and just tell you all the end of Armstrong's adventure. So we aren't, we aren't going to find out what happens with Blue Blue and the Crones. Maybe I'll do that later on down the road, but we're going to take a, a break from Totten for now. But anyways, this is it, the last part for at least a couple of months. So, without further ado, let's once more enter this magical world. It roared and fell to the ground where it lay till its skin and meat was eaten, and bones were turned to stone. Uh, don't ask what ate the creature's bones and skin. The troll hit its club into both lost landers and crones. A broken chain was tied to its leg. Many of the Lost Landers tried to stop the troll, but were dragged across the floor. Armstrong kept fighting, but then he stopped and got him arrows ready to shoot. Every step the troll made made cracks in the floor. He aimed the bow down to the floor. He then shot the arrow. The arrow hit the crack and the floor broke from the troll's feet. But the chain somehow was caught onto a rock. The character was dangled high backwards for a while. But then the chain broke and it fell, but not to its death. After a while, they kill all the crones. Not many were left. Armstrong, cried a lost lander. The enemy has died. Now we must find a way out of this cursed cave. You are right, said Armstrong. We will have to guess which way to go, said Armstrong. They went through a door on the stairs. I can see a way out, yelled the lost lander. He was about to walk forward when Armstrong stopped him. There below them was a dark pit filled with silos. These creatures are horrible beasts. They look like snakes and are red, yet they don't have a tail on them. Instead, their bodies are never-ending, for the rest of their bodies are in the ground, and no man has ever saw it. Every fang dipped with yellow poison. One bite from them would be the end of your life. They hated hotness and preferred to live in the dirt. Water could make them sleep and lava would make them die. They took no sides and spoke no languages. They were always in a group, and they were always hungry. They could heal themselves, and they could grow their heads back if they were cut off. The dungeon was a dark and scary place. There were forever burning candles hanging on the wall, and vines were hanging all around the place, long vines that were thick and strong and brown. Suddenly they heard a strange sound, and there a cave troll, uh, the same one that had been covered with rocks and fell off a cliff, came blasting through the door. Quick, to the other side, yelled Armstrong. They grabbed a vine and swung to the other side. And when Armstrong got to the other side and sang, In a dungeon filled with creatures, even eviler than crones there, is one hope of escape. Light a torch that has not been lighted. Light it. Come on, said a lost lander. But just then the cave troll made a giant leap, but he didn't make it to the other side, but instead fell into a bed of sinos and was eaten to the bone. The lost landers and Armstrong raced out of the cave. Thank you, said Armstrong. No problem, said the keen of the lost landers. Besides, you saved our life more than we saved your life. We would have been eaten alive by crones if it hadn't been for you. Er, uh, I'm confused. Who saved who? asked Armstrong. Never mind, said the keen of the Lost Landers. You shall get a gift. Here are three golden powers which have been given the power of flight and life and been in our treasury for some time. Also, if you ever wish to enter the kingdom, feel free to do so. You or your family are welcome any time you wish. Your name is in the Hall of Fame. Thank you, said Armstrong, but found they had disappeared. 
Hmm, magic, said Armstrong. He then began to wander through the woods for what seemed hours, with his sword drawn. At last he began to hear some cheerful voices. He quickly walked to where the sound was coming from and found himself out of the woods and in Bengal fields. Cheers he heard from the great Armstrong castle. He raced across the field. He walked inside to find everyone cheering and playing. And actually there is an image here. I'll just go ahead and show you that. What in the world is going on here? Armstrong wondered. Then he saw a banner which read, Happy Birthday, Marlowe. Oh my gosh, said Armstrong. I was in that place for three days. He ran as fast as he could to the town square, where Marlowe was opening the presents. Mary gave him an enchanted mirror. John gave him a sword. Jamie gave him a pocket knife. Armstrong ran up to the table. Here you go, my dear son, said Armstrong, reaching into his backpack. But before he could take anything out, Marlowe said, Father, you are home. Yes, my dear son. And here is your present, said Armstrong. And he gave him the bracelet that he had found in Blue Blue's cave. I don't really want this. Here, you take it, said Marlowe. No, you take it, said Armstrong. But I don't want it, said Marlowe. No, you will take it, said Armstrong. But I don't want it, said Marlowe. You will take it, said Armstrong, giving Marlowe an evil glance. Marlowe, looking scared, quickly put the bracelet into his pocket. Second, Armstrong gave him the ten powers. Maybe you'll be able to get them to do tricks, said Armstrong. He had received these gifts from Ellendil, if you'll remember. And that is where we are going to stop our story. Uh, again, we might continue with the story of Armstrong and all the rest of them. It is a very long story, so it might take us more than one couch sitting. But until then, farewell from the magical world of Totten.